What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the G Show Podcast. I am G1, and this is an extremely late review of Cowboy Bebop, Netflix's Cowboy Bebop, the live-action version of Cowboy Bebop. Really wanted to get this done when the show came out. This is the first podcast of 2022. It's been a very long time since I've been with my co-host, my brother, the guy who started the whole podcast game here on the G Show with me, G95, a.k.a. Matt. What's up, bro? Miss you, man. Hey, I miss you, too. Thanks for having me back. Uh, thanks for having me back. No, you, you're always welcome. You know that. Um, yes. We're going to get into the Cowboy Bebop. We have to. We've been... You know, we haven't really gotten in-depth on Messenger. It was just like, you want to do this review? Yeah, I got a lot to say. So do I. We got to do it? Yep. So we are here now today, the 20th of January of all times. (laughs) So much has come out since that show came out. I mean, it's terrible. But before we get into the Cowboy Bebop review, I would be remiss if I did not mention another TV show happening, coming out in the works Apple TV has made a deal with Legendary to bring the MonsterVerse, Monarch's MonsterVerse, to the small screen. I'm blown away. It says featuring featuring Godzilla. Now, that doesn't mean Godzilla's going to be in it, but I'm pretty sure they'll show stock footage. I'm cool with that. But they're going to open up the MonsterVerse. And I got to be honest, I just got my subscription to Apple TV today. I don't care. What do you think? Um, I am really cautiously optimistic. I really don't want to have to pay for another streaming service. And I, I honestly, up until this announcement, I forgot that Apple TV was a thing. Same here. <laughs> um, it's really weird to me that since HBO and Warner Bros and Legendary are so interconnected that Apple TV is the one picking this up instead of HBO Max, where I feel like it would probably get more viewership. Right. Um, but I th- gut reaction. This is really cool. Um, I've been on a Godzilla kick lately. I want the MonsterVerse to continue. It, however, it continues, whether it be on Apple, on Apple Plus or Apple TV or whatever it's called, um, comics or more films. Ideally, more films. Right. Um. So I will. Oh. Wait for the, the trailers to come out. If it looks really, really good, then I'll get the subscription for the season. Uh, if it looks just okay, I'll wait for the season to come out and then binge it over the, the 10-day free trial or whatever it is. Smart move. All right, well, since that's out of the way, I think it's time to blow the scene. You know what I'm get talking about. Get everybody and their stuff together. That's right. Three, two, one. Let's jam. Let's jam. Well, we can't play the music because we'll get copyrighted infringement or whatever. We'll we'll get a strike. But we can talk about Netflix's Cowboy Bebop. And my God, talk about about a controversial show. And and not a controversial show in the sense of there is some uh, material in it that, that makes you scratch your head. But the contrast, the complete difference from the source material. Now... I'm just going to wreck it. The source material, the original anime, is my favorite anime of all time. So I'm looking at this show from afar like they better make this work. And for me personally, as soon as I watched the first 10 minutes right before the, the credits hit, the opening uh, intro hit, I was like, yep, they did it. And I, it was right before I had to go to work. I was about to call out. I said, they did it. They did it. They fucking nailed in my opinion, the atmosphere of Cowboy Bebop in the first 10 minutes of the opening show of episode one. That was me. What did you think? Um, so, like you, Cowboy Bebop is also my favorite anime. Um, I do owe that to you. Of I remember sitting on one of our early podcasts and you describing... Uh, the Ballad of Fallen Angels to me, and I think that was the next anime that it picked up, and um, I watched it, I loved it, I rewatched it, really connected with it, 
and now it is my favorite anime. It is uh, Spike is tattooed on my arm. I rewatch the the series once a year, and I you know watch content about it constantly. Um, I've been. I know I said this a minute ago, but really cautiously optimistic about the show for a very long time. Uh, I wanted it to be good. I wanted it to, to succeed. I liked a lot of the choices that were made or announced before the show came out. And um, one of my closest friends and I sat down the day that it premiered. Uh, we both took the day off work and binged pretty much the whole thing, save for the very last episode. Um I gotta say, I liked it. I contra- contrary to popular opinion, I really liked it. There's a lot of things that they did wrong, and there's a lot of things that they changed, and there's a lot of things that are different. But not everything that is different is bad. Correct. I think it captures a good representation of Cowboy Bebop. It doesn't quite nail the essence of Cowboy. Bebop. Cowboy Bebop, in my opinion, but it does still feel like Cowboy Bebop. I gotta agree. That's that's exactly my mindset with this. Trying to compare the anime to the show, that's not gonna ever work. You're never gonna get the same thing you got. Obviously, because you can do more with drawing and animation. Than you mm-hmm. can in, in, in with live action, but like you, I absolutely felt that they, I felt they captured the essence perfectly. It is, meanwhile, in a alternate universe, you know, like it is another timeline, but it's it flowed to me. It flowed. Now I'm a sucker. One of the main reasons why I love Cowboy Bebop is the music, and this nailed it. They they the yeah, music well, was yeah. on point. Even the original. Yeah, exactly. You get Yoko Kano and and you're in money. You're you're money. Mm -hmm. I I like the new score. I like some of the new tunes. What really got me, like you said, the atmosphere. The, some of the, the the, the set pieces of this show really blew me away. And I mean like it's dirty, it's dirty, dark alley with neon lights, puddles on the floor, could be piss. It might not even be rain, it could be piss. But it was those little, little details like that. Lots of that, like, dystopian kind of neon. Yes. Um, everything felt very lived in. Yes. I, I was thinking about this today, actually, and the um, I think the color palette they, that they use is, honestly, I don't like it. I see you nodding your head. I'm I nodding don't my head. A that... lot of it. Um, it. It was a little bit too, like washed out it was a little too like um oversaturated and i don't feel like that fits in with that 90s anime aesthetic okay um i i feel like um the the if you're to like set out a color palette of 90s anime usually like the saturation is like pretty low i think it's it's undersaturated the, the contrast is really really down low um, or up high, I don't know. I, I don't know color theory that well. Right. Um, but it, this was just a little bit too bright, a little bit too shiny in a lot of aspects, a little bit too sepia tone in some aspects where the original is is not. Um, but that's that's fine. That's that's nothing to really nitpick that much. That is, that's, you know, cinematography dictates a lot in film and television, but it is if something is still competent looking, um, I think it's, it's okay. And I, I don't know a lot about the visual medium of film in general either. I know I've seen videos of people who say a lot, like a lot to say about the, the live action bebop as, as a visual representation of film with all the Dutch angles and stuff like that. They have a lot of bad things to say about that. I'm just a guy who likes movies and TV I don't really notice that. Um, cinematography is not my forte, and I, I thought it was, like, while I don't think the color palette matches the original, I don't have a problem with it. Gotcha. 
And when you mentioned color palette, I was like, yes, no, I was not, and I was going crazy. I, I absolutely love the color palette. I thought it was great. But again, like you said, that's not one of the things where I was like, oh my god, this color palette makes the show so great. It wasn't that. Mm-hmm. It was, I honestly feel like, because I loved it. I'm not going to lie. I absolutely loved this show. I did. And there are things I didn't like about it, but it did not take away from what I loved about it. And again, it just felt like a perfect standalone, different reality version of what what has come before it. So I, I'm, it, it kills me, right? Because I'm like, this show is great. It, it, it hits all the beats in my opinion, right? Again, certain things, eh, but everything I wanted to see, I saw. I was like, well, shit, and it was done well. It really was. And like you, I'm not there watching it for like the cinematography. I'm there. I'm in for the story. And I honestly think that the creators of this show, the actors, everybody went and decided they they put together a passion project. Like I didn't feel anything was dialed in except maybe vicious. I'm just saying that was a little over the top. But I digress. I felt like the core. We'll get into vicious. We, yeah, we're gonna have to. But I felt like the the the, the core of of this was passionate about the project and to me it showed it showed on screen i I, again that's just me if i was a part of that group i'd be totally satisfied with what we got like 100 percent, because i loved it well let's uh on on that note let's start off with the things that we liked about the show like let's separate it into likes and dislikes and then maybe if we have time for it some of the hot takes that a lot of other people have also had hot takes. All right, let's do it. Um, for me, uh, I think the um, one thing that I really especially loved about the show was the casting. I thought almost all around the casting was spot on. Um, Mustafa Shakir, who plays Jet, is possibly the best, most perfect part of the show he nailed like he almost sounds like um Bo Billings who did the uh, voice. American voice of of um Jet which I had to look up because I was like wait a minute that's Jet <laughs> it's like that well, doesn't make sense sound almost identical um I I really like like his portrayal is phenomenal um same thing with uh John Cho as Spike fucking phenomenal like he, he really put in the time and effort to get the vibe of Spike. Obviously, uh, he is older than Spike was in the animated series, but he's still, like, they, they, uh, I won't say incorporate that, but they, it's, it's, his character feels a little bit more world-weary and a little bit more, like, devil-may-care kind of attitude than, um, the, the original Spike. I, he, he nailed it. He nailed it. He nailed um, it. Yep. He, he really did. Um, Danielle Pineda also did a phenomenal job as this iteration of Faye. I know a lot of people have a lot of bad things to say about Faye, especially. Um, and we can kind of touch on some of that later with the, the, um, the hot takes about her, her outfit or hot takes about Daniela Pineda's response to the response of the outfit. Um, We can get into that later, but I thought she did a great job. Like she really did. Uh, She was, she was giving it all. And she seems like a really, she seems like a really fun person. And uh, I like this iteration of Faye. It may not be the same Faye from the original, but it's, it's a Faye that, still matches up in my opinion like yeah go ahead it's it's not a one-to-one comparison like they they added i feel like she's the most drastically changed she is that's where i was Um, going of of the core of the core three yep at least because i i felt like real quick i i felt like because i loved her everything you're saying i'm i agree with you 100 i loved her i felt like she was playing faye more cartoony than Faye in the anime, and sure. I didn't. Yeah, and yeah, I didn't well, hate it. Yeah. And I did not hate it. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that. This is a more 
mature or less less mature, more um, vulgar, and yes, like this is a fae of today's generation, not maybe the same fae of the the detective noir um, using her sexuality as a weapon, kind of. Yep. It's 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 that's not the it, it, that's not the same as it was in ninety eight. Um, but, and I, I totally understand if people have problems with that or have issues with that. Um, but I, I still think it works. I still think it works within the ca- the character of Faye Valentine, in Absolutely. my opinion. I'm with you. Um, well, let's just talk about the, the, the characters. I, I think the incorporation of a lot of the episode, like, I, I loved the Teddy Bomber episode. I loved um, the, oh, fuck, what else was there? Like, I loved the... the Pierre LeFou? Yeah. yeah um, you know, I, I don't know if I love that one, okay. honestly. Uh, how about you? What are, what are some of the things that you liked? So I'm going to just start with Pierre LeFou. That is my favorite, single favorite anime episode of all time. Like, of anything. I love that episode. 26 minutes of just pure blitz for me. I love the character. And, and terror. And terror, absolutely. So when I saw that in the trailer, I said, like, wait a minute. They're doing Pierre Lefeu? That was the one episode I was like, they have to get that right. And for all intents and purposes, it, it's not the same thing, but like I said, this show had established before that episode that it's not the same thing. So mm-hmm. when I got to it, because that was like, what, episode seven, I think. I was like, okay, okay, okay. And then at the end, I was like, you know what? That was dope. I totally buy that one. I'm totally down for that version of PLFO. So to me, I loved it. Spike, yes, agreed everything you said. I, I love John Cho. He put in the work. He put in the work. This dude really wanted this show to succeed, and you can tell, and you see it, it comes across in his acting and his portrayal of Spike. And again, like I said, the very first episode, the first ten minutes, I was like, that's it. That's it. It was, basically, it was the beginning of the Cowboy Bebop movie when they go into the convenience store, down to the music. The only thing different was it was in a space casino. So I was like, this is great. Um, I already touched on Faye. I agree with you 100%. I like this iteration. She didn't play it sultry. She didn't play it sexy. She played it a bit cartoony. And I, and it, not saying that the whole thing was a cartoon. She, she wasn't goofy all the time. There are nods to Faye. You see that progressing. You see her. And oh my God, if this show would have kept going... To see where she went, that's what I was looking forward to the most because she was, like you said, the most drastically different. The most drastic... Well, that's not true. It was someone else. But as far as the core, she was the most drastically changed. Jet, that... I'm telling you. I had to look it up. I was like, that, that's, that's, that's impossible. <laughs> that was impossible what got me, and again, one of the reasons why I was like, this is it. The way he says Spike. The way he calls Spike out every... I said, "That's you sure that's not him? You sure? He absolutely nails the character. Absolutely nails the character from everything. In that one episode where he's even doing the, the whole detective thing. Like, you know, he went back, he got his contact back... I I just couldn't believe it. But what I loved about it, too, is they added that layer of him having a family. Come on, man. That? Oh. So so personally, um, to to contrast that, uh, I was not a fan of that, actually. Okay. Um, Maybe this won't go quite as as we planned with uh, the... um, Not comparing? The... the, No, no, with the... um, Talking about the good and then talking about the bad. Okay. Um, I, I got to say that I don't like that he had a family. I um, the, the My biggest, uh, aside from Vicious, spoilers, I fucking hate Vicious in this show. 
It's just horrible. Spoilers, me too. Vicious is the worst part of the show. Yes. Um, but the my biggest umbrage with the show as a whole is um, that to me, the original Cowboy Bebop is about loneliness. It's about lonely people. Okay. And Jet has a family. Like, he's not with them, and he can't be, like, a part of them, but that doesn't mean that he's necessarily lonely. Like, he has people in his life to an extent. Um, uh, my biggest um, um, umbrage of the show is is that none of the people, none of our, of our main cast are necessarily lonely people. They're, they're all people who are missing something, they're all people who are, like, striving for something. And the thing that I wanted to see most that was was that, was that loneliness. Because in the original, everybody is lonely. They're, they're all lonely people, to, to some extent or another. They're all running away from their past. Jet isn't running away from his past. Pat, his, with having a family or having an ex-wife, uh, a former co-worker who is now his daughter's stepfather. <laughs> That's not like, funny. <laughs> like, no, it's, it's, it's not funny. No, that, it's, yeah, that um, was sad. I was like, ooh. Uh, like, all of those things firmly root him in his past. He's not running away from it. Um, and I, what I think that the end of the season really set up perfectly is everybody would be in those lonely positions. Yeah. Um, spoilers to whoever hasn't seen this by now or is interest, interested in seeing, uh, seeing this, but we will be probably spoiling, spoiling this quite a bit. But um, Jed kind of loses everything. He loses his whole crew. He loses, he loses uh, like, his daughter calls her stepfather daddy. Like, that's and not in a weird way. Like that's um, like that has got to be a really devastating thing to hear. He he has lost everybody. Spike loses all of his friends. He loses everybody he loves, and Faye goes off to try to find those things because she finally knows that she is missing those things. Every like that sets. If, if this show were to get a season two, it would set it up perfectly into um, they are all now officially lonely people running away from things or looking for something instead of being tethered to the past, in my opinion. I feel like the end of the season really sets it up to nail the vibe of Cowboy Bebop that I was missing in this first season. That is, but it got fucking canceled. Yeah, but it got canceled. That's fair. That Everything you just said is fair. I mean, like, again, I did like the whole Jet thing because I still, I, I, I felt like he was a lonely dude. But what I what I think it set up, and again, this is me personally because everything you just said, again, 100% fair. Because he still had that family there, he was the glue. I mean, I mean, he's the glue in, in anime, and we, I'm pretty sure wherever they went in season two, damn it, it would have been the same thing. But he was that father figure, you know? Even though Spike looked older than him, I'm just saying, he was still Spike that... Spike is older than him. And he is, right? Yeah. But he was still the, he was still that family figure. I mean, like, what, mm. if I'm not mistaken, again, because I only seen this... I, I watched it that first week it came out, and I... And we were supposed to do it then. We were supposed to do this then. But wasn't he kind of like... Not shitting on Faye, if I'm not mistaken, or was no, he? No, shitting? he was. He was trying to give Faye a fair chance. And it was Spike uh, that was like, "No, get her out yeah. of here." Yes. Yeah, no, he was. He was still the mature one. He was still the responsible one. And that's and that's which nails down a lot of like the essence yes. of of Jet. Right, and that's what I liked about him having a family because he was kind of like, "Yo, I like." If this was my daughter, no. What are you kidding me? I'm gonna knock you out, Spike. But so I, I, I mean, I did, I did like the family thing. I, I like that addition. I did. But what you just said, and and I didn't think about it like this was because he lost everything. It was setting up 
what would have been the route the anime went. And I think in that sense, when you look at this show as like a prequel, like, well, yeah, why not? Even though I know it's not. But I was like, yeah, that's dope. But I'm, well, That's what I feel like is the true brilliance of the original Cowboy Bebop is I've listened to so many different opinions and video essays and, and uh, fans' reactions to the original show, and uh, everybody takes away something different from it. But nobody's wrong, necessarily, in their, in their assessment of it. Like, I listen to things where people took this out of it, or this was in their ter- interpretation of this episode. It's like, like I, I didn't see it that way, but I see your point. Right. And I feel like that is what the, the sheer brilliance of the original, whereas this might, the, the live action Bebop does not have that nuance. Gotcha. Let's, let's switch gears real quick. Before we get into cons, let me ask you a question. I'm going to pose this question to you. Sure. What sunk the live action version of Cowboy Bebop? What was it that it, they took away the second season? In your opinion. That, oh, man, that's a, that is a good question. Um, I think it was a lot of things. Like, I think, I think it was the lukewarm reception from fans of the original. Um, cause the responses that I've seen have been for the most part, really negative. Okay. Um, I, I think it was probably partially not a whole lot of interest outside of fans of the original. Like, I'm friends with a very vast, diverse group of people. My friends who love Cowboy Bebop watched the new series. Um, I And a lot of people I know that don't like Cowboy Bebop didn't watch it because they weren't interested. I feel like only... It's, it's very possible that really only the, the core fan base of the original watched the show just out of curiosity out of curiosity or or spite or hopefulness uh, as, as we watched it um, but yeah no, probably not a, not a big not a big uh, interest from people outside of the core fan base did it and I think that that might be it I don't know what about you I, I that's I I agree with that. That's the sad part because as I really a, didn't see a lot of people talking about it that right. weren't like who didn't start with the conversation with I'm a huge fan of the original. But yep. So I work at a school. I work at a high school, and a lot of these high school kids they watch anime, and I'll <laughs> in my car on my uh. Rearview mirror, I have a little dangling spike. And I remember one time I take my car to auto shop and the kid gets in the car with me. He's like, Ray, is that, is that spike? Yeah, yeah it is. And he's like, oh my God, you watch Cowboy Now mind you, I'm a 40 plus year old man, right? This kid wasn't even alive when that show came out. And he's like, oh my God, you watch Cowboy Bebop? I'm like, dude, do I watch it? That's my favorite anime of all time. So it was like, bam, we connected. Like, Cowboy Bebop. This show's coming out. There were several kids that were like, Cowboy Bebop's coming out. And I'm like, what you know about that? You know, like, what? And it's like, holy shit. I I find, like, these young kids weren't alive when that original came out who didn't see it when Toonami first started airing it, loving this show and wanting to see this live action. And it's crazy because... For the most part, they all loved the Netflix series the way I loved it. And I was like, whoa, but I agree with you. That's a very small portion. I don't think I don't think they marketed this show to the wider masses. Yeah. You know, I, I, it was it was based a lot around. You remember Cowboy Bebop? Well, we got more for you. Yeah. Remember this? Tank? And yeah, I mean, that's an automatic hook for me. I'm in. Oh, you got me. Right? But, because I remember watching that Netflix thing. They did like four hours, and all I did was sit there and wait for the Cowboy Bebop trailer. 
And when it finally hit, I was like, okay. I loved it because I saw, you know, I saw things that I was like, that's dope. I can't wait to see the show. But then I'm like, does this appeal to everybody else? So I, like, I was, I, I really appreciate the effort that they put into to uh, recreate the opening as much as they did. Because I remember when they when uh, Netflix dropped that. And I just thought it looked weird, like the, yeah. the 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 lighting contrast between the background of the characters and, and, and of the live action characters and the, the animated background and stuff. Like it all looked very fan film y. So I was like, oh no, like I'm kind of oh shit. I, I know the my my very good friend Nicole, who I watched binge the series with. She like she saw that and she loved it. Like I know a lot of people were like they saw that and they're like, oh shit, this looks really good. I thought to to be a hypocrite against my uh, previous point about not knowing shit about cinematography. Like I thought the cinematography of the opening was like kind of bad. So like when that like when that came out, I was like, oh no, fuck, that's <laughs> not amazing. But no matter what I saw, like the things that I liked, the things that I didn't like, I was still going to give it a chance. Mm -hmm. I wanted to give it a chance at Cowboy Bebop in any iteration, even a fucking Broadway musical, deserves a chance. Don't give me any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, when those when those stills came out of, like, the cast, like, before all the, the like, actual, like, video promotion came out, of, of just the stills of the cast, like Spike in the church and, and the, the, the... The trio um, on the couch? Yeah, like, like I saw them, I was like, this looks fucking great. This yep. looks like Bebop. This feels like Bebop. Like, I was I was so excited. Yeah, the church, that, that church shot got, that that sold me. And, th and then mm -hmm. I saw again, and then I saw PLFO, and I'm like, oh, you win. <laughs> you win. Um... Yeah, the, yeah, that's funny with the intro thing. You know how in, in TV shows like on Netflix, whatever it is, you you're able to skip the intro if you mm -hmm. want. I don't. I, you don't skip that intro the way you don't skip Peacemaker's intro. You just don't skip the intro. You leave that shit running. You leave it running, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, I, I think when when my friend and I bin, binged it, um, we we watch the intro every single time. I, it, it yeah. I love it. Even if it's not the same as the original, like the song, like Tank is still the same. But Tank is the same. The, the intro itself is, is is different. It's slightly modified. Uh, yeah, it's it's modified. Um, I think it would have been cool to intersplice little bits, like frames here and there, or animations of the original in there. I think that would have been cool, but that's just me speculating. Um, anyway, yeah, like no, like Tank is Tank is a great, amazing song. For me, what has always resonated with um, Bebop is uh, the real folk blues, the, yes. the closing being. Yes, absolutely. I, wish, I really wish they incorporated that more into the the closing credits. I was just, that's, that was my thought process. That's where I was going. I agree. But they did, they did give us that. They gave us the real folk blues, um, the scene. They, they showed it. Just like an anime, they did an anime. And I thought they fucking nailed it. Spike smoking a cigarette, you know, foot up on the wall, putting a cigarette out, dropping the rose. Like, they did that. Like, I remember them doing that. So, sure. kudos and props to that. I... All right, so... They did nail a lot of stuff. Into, so sad. I think we're about to... We're getting pretty close to leaning into our, our dislikes. Well, but well, well, we there's one more that, like for me. There's one more like. Um. All right, well, then, then go ahead. I on obviously I. Oh yeah, I'm, no, I I'm just great. I and the little things, uh Adrian Barbeau. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love her. Pam Greer. Yeah. Stop uh, it. Annie, Annie Annie I thought was a great addition to the show or not addition but um recreation. Recreation, uh, yep. Or, or uh like a lot of people's big criticism is Bebop is inherently a episodic show, which right. I get. That is not the Netflix formula, right. so I'm total. I was totally, personally okay with them making it a bingeable show, a show with an overarching story, 
um, a beginning, a middle, and an end with a hook to lead into a second season, as the net Netflix model does. But um, but Bebop actually does have that. I mean, it, it's serialized. It doesn't seem that way. But once it, whenever when when the first intro, the introduction of Vicious, that was it in the in the original. That was it. There, there's your there's your serialization because that's the that's the main plot now. And yeah, there's so many different things that happen in between Toys in the Attic, for instance. That's one of mm-hmm. my favorite episodes. But they, I, I disagree with people saying that the original wasn't like a serialized show. Was that, no, it, it really is. There's more episodic features to it. But there's a Spike has the arc from Spike, beginning to Spike end. Spike does have the arc, but I feel like you can still watch it. Any episode out of context, and it will and it will still make sense. Yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. It's a, it's a sitcom in that in that aspect. Like you can pick it up anywhere. You could pick it up at the finale and still be like, yeah, no, it's, I, I got it. I, I think I got it. Bang. Um, oh, fuck me. Uh, and I I'm totally okay with Netflix making this an overarching thing. I think it it, it fits their business model. It fits. Cowboy Bebop, uh, what I would like to to talk to you about or, or have a discussion about before we lead into our, our abject dislikes of the show is every episode of the show, for the most part, is, is, is a retooling, re-adaptation, amalgamation of existing episodes of the show, except for episode nine, the, the flashback episode of Spike and Vicious in the Syndicate, which is, despite the the Spike and Julia thing, despite the the rose and the cigarettes, uh, is almost entirely original content. What did you think of that? I loved it. I'm glad to be honest with you, because like I said, it's not it's not what we know. It's playing off of what we know. This is a different reality. This is. This is Cowboy Bebop Earth 2. And to see that Julia fell for Vicious, right? Or vice versa. And then the affair and all that stuff and then everything the way it happened. To see that, I mean, sometimes people say you don't need to know the reasoning behind certain things. It works on its own. And I think that's true for the original but for this, this episodic thing, when Spike, I think in episode two, uh, uh, um, basically lets Vicious know, yo, I'm still alive. I, I needed to know now because of Vicious reaction, his reaction to that, I needed to know why is this dude so mad? Like, like what the, what happened? Why? So seeing all of that. I, I actually, I dug it. Now, again, I'm under the impression we're getting a season two. Spoiler, we're not. So I didn't mind if they threw an episode like that in that is not, like you said, Perfect World, an amalgamation of several episodes in one. So I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Sure. sure. I completely agree with you. Honestly, oh, sure. that was my favorite episode of... The live action series. We're not having a good podcast here. We're agreeing on everything. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> um, no, I, I really did. I, I really did love it. Um, it was my favorite because it was to me. It just felt like supplemental bebop. This was. It was exploring things that I have not seen before. That like maybe I was curious about like this is you know in in the original it is all just kind of based on your own headcanon to an to an extent of like oh like who who was Julia to to Spike before this we know that she was with Vicious but like who was she was she part of the the syndicate or was she not was she was she a hitman herself fucking maybe but maybe. like it um like that is never explored in there and to explore their backstories a little bit more. I just view that as really, I thought it was really good supplemental material. Um, seeing their dynamic together of like when they actually were friends, I gotta say, I do 
I know a lot of people have shit on this, but I loved the idea of Spike being named Fearless. Oh, in, hell in yes. The, in, while he was in the syndicate. I, I thought that was great. I thought that was, like, like because Vicious is such an over-the-top cheesy name, like, nobody is, nobody births out a kid. Nobody... <laughs> Well, nobody's like, no, nah, you, you're vicious, yeah. like, or even, and and unless you're like an edgy emo kid in circa 2011, <laughs> nobody else is gonna name your like name your give yourself the nickname of vicious, uh, like that that shit ended like fucking in like 2013. Just, like, I'll, I'll, high I want you to hold that note until after this podcast because I'm gonna tell you something off 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 uh, sure. record. Um, <laughs> So I, so I love the idea of uh, Vicious and Fearless being, like, monikers. I, I think that's great. I and think so, too. Vicious stayed in the syndicate, so we kept that 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 moniker. Um, Spike, who was in, in the anime, going on and on to a lot of extents about how he never feared death, how he never had... Uh, like he was ready to embrace death at any point in time, and until he met uh, Julia, like it, it fits with his character. For him to be named Fearless, thought it was great. Love that. Loved all of that. I love their dy- dynamic together. Of like, they they were best friends. They hung out all the time. They just went to bars together. I, I thought it was one of those things I love too. Like you mentioned that. Wait. It's a simple scene. They're driving in the car to the next bar. And mm-hmm. I was just like, what is this American graffiti shit that I'm loving right now? Like, I just Yeah, yeah. well, like, like uh, Vicious is like, well, like, like, what kind of bar is this? And Spike's <laughs> like, well, it's like, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a fancy bar, but it's a bar to get shit-faced in. Like, yeah. I, I've had those nights before. Like, hell yeah. Like, I love me a good dive bar as I'm holding my fucking whiskey and coke here. Right. <laughs> Like I love, like I love a good, gross, just nasty dive bar. Sometimes uh, you need I, that injection in your life. It's, and, and it's I, perfect. And I loved the uh, night nightclub kind of aesthetic that they were like building the whole show around. Yes, which I think is a perfect segue into a lot of our dislikes. Holy crap! How did you read my mind? We that, this is the worst podcast we ever did. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, until... <laughs> Alright, well, I'll let you start then. Okay, one of the things I did not like was... And, and this is just a personal uh, critique. There was a lot of over... Over-sexualization. And I, I okay. thought... There's a lot of titties. There's a lot of... There was some sure. sexual... And I did... That, to me, didn't fit Bebop. And I again, and I'm the one saying... It's a different reality. Is Earth be Bebop? Um, but a lot of the times in a nightclub, it was, it was just, to me, it was a lot of over-sexualization, not with the main characters, but just around them, that I was just, like, love scratching my head. I was like, I don't need all of this. Like, this wasn't a thing in the original. I don't know. I, I just don't disagree with that. Like, yeah. so, like, as, as in the show as a whole, I don't think it was over-sexualized, but Faye herself was intentionally over-sexualizing herself. So what I mean is, like, that was a shit ton of prostitution. There was a shit ton of, like, sure. just yeah, alluding yeah, to this yeah. stuff, you know? And I was like... Was like the, the kink dungeon and all that. The yeah, kink like, dungeon. You know, I, 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 that one, yeah. That one, I was like, okay, oh, sure. You know, like, I, I let it pass. Because it didn't really take me out of the episode overall. Because like I, I really did. I, I love the show, the, the the series, but it was that. That's one of those things that I was just. I was like bullet point. I'm not. This ain't one of my things. I'm not feeling that. Sure. Um, that's fair. Uh, another. I don't really have much, man. It was that, and then like, I guess the one we were both gonna say, vicious. I was, I was disappointed with that. I like sure. the. I like the guy. He had the look. Okay. He had the so, look. To, to, I'll, I'll, sorry to cut you off, but no, I, yeah. I think uh, I may have more mm, dislikes mm. than you do. But uh, bring them on. No, no, no. Like let's 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 spring off of vicious and then just um, just go off from there. But so continue. So 
I liked I liked what the writers were doing with Vicious, right? I thought that was interesting. I did not like the portrayal of Vicious. I think the actor looked the part, but as far as portraying the part, I was like, that's not that's not Vicious. And again, here we go, I'm contradicting myself because people are mad at the way Faye Valentine was. And I was like, no, I kind of like that version of Faye. I did not like this version of Vicious. I did not think this Vicious posed that much of a threat to Spike. In episode two, Spike had him dead to rights. And I'm like, I'm, I'm leaving it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. I want to see where it goes. But Vicious kind of came off as like a spoiled brat. And that's not the sure. Vicious yeah, I know. I totally agree. Um, I'm actually going to take it like probably like three steps further than you did. Yes, please uh, do. Vicious was just the worst part of the show. Okay. Um, he was a spoiled daddy's, like just a rich spoiled daddy's boy. Yes. Which is not a good archetype to have for anybody, let alone your main antagonist of a show. Yes, someone named um, Vicious for all crying out loud. It was, it was just, it was just, he was just bad. Like, he was bad. Like, uh, I personally just, like, here's where we're going to disagree about Vicious. I think the a- actor did a good job with what he was given. Okay. But That's the fair. writing for Vicious is just terrible. He's, he's a okay. wine spoiled daddy's boy. Like, well, I want to be in charge. Why can't I be in... No one likes me. Why can't I be in charge? Uh, I don't love the whole domestic abuse thing between him and Julia. I think that I is... In, in I, a see, show I forgot that part. That, I, I slipped, that slipped my mind. I agree yeah, with that. Yeah, it's in, in a show that is so predicated on, um, for lack of a better term, being woke um, with in, in terms of, like, like, female empowerment and and non-binary characters and all that um i think it was in poor taste to have uh domestic abuse be such a like a commonplace in their relationship yeah i i'll I'll say i was gonna say it was a gross part of the show like it didn't fit into the show it didn't didn't add anything it didn't add anything to julia's character of her being <laughs> abused necessarily. Um, it did. At the end, it did. I I disagree. I really disagree. Really? Uh, Let's put it in right now. Well, I'll let I'll, you have at it. She she totally got her revenge on him, and it, I don't think that would have ever been a thing in her brain, in her mind, if it wasn't for the abuse. Sure. So I guess my but I do is, agree with you. Uh, the domestic abuse thing, I that you could cut that right out. Yeah, it's it's like a lot of rape stuff. Like you just like in movies and TV, you, like you don't need it. You really don't need it. You can work your way around it. You can imply even it. implying it. Implying it is fine. Implying yeah. it is probably worse oh. and probably more impactful. Okay. Um, but in in my opinion, um, but vicious did get what he deserves. Vicious is a weenie, and he got a weenie's demise, which is not the the vicious from the anime. He's not. I know we said we weren't going to con- compare and contrast too much, but vicious in this the is anime an, this is, is an exception. Yeah, the vicious in the anime is cold and calculating and mysterious, and he's a fucking crow. It's just a robot crow just hanging out on his chest. For Where no was reason. that crow? Um, he, he just, like, he was, his, his, uh, impression on the show was felt throughout the whole thing since he was introduced. He's, uh, very impactful. Even though his presence isn't, isn't seen, he is, to quote everybody's third least favorite Star Wars movie, A Phantom Menace. But he's... 
I see you groaning. I'm sorry. We'll get no, into that later. That's another thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, the poor joke. Whatever. Uh, but it, it, like his his impact on the show is felt, even if he's not necessarily there. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And he was he was scary. Like he's he's just a straight up sociopath. In this, he's just a whiny baby, and he just gets. Like, he, he gets captured, and Julia's like, I'm gonna keep you alive, and I'm gonna fucking just, like, keep you in here in this dungeon. And he's like, no, please. Daddy. After all, after all I've done for you. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, um... No, I, I don't like that. I, I, don't, I don't feel like it fits into Julia's character, because she was so trying so hard to, to break out of that. She was, she was trying to... Not, she was never trying to usurp vicious in my opinion no uh she was always just trying to find a way out of that abusive relationship yes i i see i i see that i think in, again because like i said i only seen this show one time and that was when it, the first week so it's been a while but i i thought i thought it might have been pam Grier's character that was that like might have planted the seeds in her head you know um the, the realization hits where it's like, you know what? He doesn't really have the control he thinks he has. And I can take it. Um, but I will say, I Julia was another thing that I kind of, I did not like her I, no, I was, characterization I at all. You know? Like, I'm giving her props only because of the whole, maybe the reason why she did what she did was because of the abuse. But, like, that... The, the way it ended with her being queen pin, um, I was like, uh, sh- sure, maybe. I, I, didn't, I didn't like the the total, almost shot-for-shot shot remake of Battle of the Fallen Angels, the, the fight scene between Spike and Vicious, only to have that end with just, a, a, like, a, a gag, or just a... Yep. Just a a um, swerve, it's a swerve. Yeah, a swerve, yeah, um... I and I liked I never I did not have a problem with Julian's character up until those final moments either because it felt so unearned. Agreed. Agreed. So now I'm looking for, like you said before, an amalgamation of episodes, but you cannot show me that picture of them in the church window. That mit- and again I. I he said we weren't going to do this, but got to do it, especially for this episode. At the church window. And then you cannot have Spike get chucked out and leave the grenade in there. Like, I was... Mm-hmm. It, it, and I get, like, you know, I was waiting for the whole, they're going to capture Faye. But then again, like I said, I kind of dug that it was Jet's daughter that was kidnapped. Um, and Spike went to go rescue, and Jet's pissed off because it's like, what did you... Because Spike didn't tell Jet what he was. What did you involve me in? What did you... Why did you put my daughter in peril? And Spike's whole thing is like, I love this man. He's like a father figure to me. I'm going to make it right. Even when, it, like, so they had that disagreement, Jet, like, I think he knocked him out. He punched him in the face. But then the whole trick with the whole, you know, the right. trunk and all that... I loved all of all of that. I loved it. Loved no, it, loved I, it. I liked. I liked that too. I, uh, despite my opinion on ha- uh, Jed having a family, like I liked right. that. Like, I liked. Uh, I even liked the really the 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 um, Faye coming in and shooting everybody. Like, welcome, welcome to the ouch, motherfuckers. Like, yes. That whole that whole meme. Like, that's kind of become a meme. I don't know if you know. No, I don't. Do. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a meme in a lot of like bebop live action bebop reviews okay um i liked it i i really liked all of that i thought it was a little that could have been written a little bit better because she just kind of shows up uh but it's it's fine it's i thought that all that was <laughs> like her showing up there was fine i thought um that was the amalgamation part that was her showing up to in the plfo episode <laughs> but they sure, just put yeah. it in there they just they they took that scene and added in Ballad of the Fallen Angels. Right. God, such a great episode um, title. I, like, I, I thought all that was it was fine. I, I like 
I'm totally okay with a serialization of, uh, or like the, or like a binge-worthy edition of Cowboy Bebop, where all the stories are slightly interconnected. Yeah. Um, I, like I'm, like Spike and Vicious's story doesn't necessarily have to be just their story. It can include Faye and and uh, Jet. I think that's fine. I really do. To, to it just the thing that comes it comes down to is good writing, which is probably the biggest fault of the show. Mm. I I don't feel like it's totally well written. And to, if we're gonna go off of um, interconnecting characters between Spike and Vicious, and interconnecting characters in the show, I think another one worth talking about is Gren. Okay. Um, I vehemently disagree with, with what they did with Gren in live action Bebop. And I Gren think, was such... Sorry, go ahead. No, I, I, I'm going to say, I, I think I might have passed out, so... Oh, uh, uh, just to agree with uh, you. Uh, with Gren, you Gren, was, Gren was such an important character in the overarching story of Bebop. Uh, he was such a... I won't say controversial figure, but he was a very taboo figure for... or character for 1998. Gotcha. Especially Japan 1998 of, of somebody who was um, born like cis or or um, or born uh, excuse me if I don't know all of the the I, I, the, I, the current, current terms yeah um, but like born like like cisgender I, I think is, is the right term so Gren, uh, Gren was the like the bartender or the, cl- the club uh, major he, D he right was a, he was a saxophone saxophone player yeah was, okay um, gotcha yeah in the anime he was somebody who fought with Vicious in the war on Titan they developed a connection and Vicious sold him out in over war crimes in court and uh, Gren was forced to partake in, in uh, medical experiments which made him I won't necessarily say trans but definitely non-binary gotcha and, and, this, and these are the things that the live action in the original show they couldn't put all of that into the live action show. We'd have had right. twenty episodes of season one, which I wouldn't have mind, instead of what we got. Right, and and it, it has come to light uh, that um, live action Bebop had more plans for Gren uh, in season two, but those things were not portrayed in season one at all. Gren was took from this this very very complex character of a a scorned war veteran who's had to go through this like forced semi-gender reassignment uh into a like a lonely saxophone player who's trying to get like who wants to get revenge on on vicious into basically excuse me they're they're just a, a club host yeah um and that was the thing it was like in an attempt to be progressive, they took this character that had all of this nuance and made it just into the sassy queer character. Gotcha. That that's that's my thing. It's like in the live action Bebop, like Gren was not portrayed well. Gotcha. And I, I I applaud them for using a for hiring a non-binary actor 
I think the actor did a great job with the, the material that they were given. I personally love um, them. I gotta be honest. Oh, per- love yeah. them. Love that again. Yeah. I, I'm sorry to anybody out there. I just I yeah. don't get. To, I'm an old guy. I, you know, I hate to use that cliched uh, uh, saying, but it's, it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. It really is. And trust me. It, it it's uh it, it is hard to keep up with various pronouns and what is what is the current terminology. We're doing our best, mm-hmm. uh, and we're just so y'all know. Behind. We are very open. I'm not. I'm not against anything. I just everybody. We're not. It's just. Please understand. I'm in my 40s, bro. I grew up in a different era. I love everyone. I don't care. I love everyone. But that, we want to. We want to be respectful to everybody. Is is our and forgive our um, lack of current terminology. This is why in, in four this. years, this podcast, uh, however buried under the YouTube algorithm it might be, or we might be using <laughs> terms that are wholly outdated. Oh, we are buried, um, brother. <laughs> we are buried yeah. like season two's hopes and dreams. So, exactly. All right, so we're coming close to the close here. Is there anything else you hated with a passion? Well, I think the big one is one that is kind of like the silently vocally agreed on with everybody is uh wait 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 before you say it are you talking about the surprise ending yeah oh come Grand. on man what are you talking about dude that was the worst shit i've ever seen ever come on man no 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 i don't want to agree with you i don't want to verbally agree with you but inside and the reason why i say this and i go ahead tell who are we talking no, no, about? No, no, no. You, you have the positive things to say. I will leave the lingering negative things. No, no, ending. because it's not, it's not about the show, man. It's about what I saw before. I mean, after. It's, it, we're talking about Ed. Yeah. Okay. So, right after I saw that episode, right? I kid you not. I saw it and I was like, uh, Okay. They could have put, they could have put Ed earlier on in the show, and I don't think the response would have been the way it was. But because they put Ed where they put Ed, I think that's what was like. Nope, that's a no go. Because radical Ed word, okay, A.K.A. Francois, okay, if you're keen to the anime. Is one of the greatest anime characters ever. I, I absolutely love the character. I saw an interview with the actress portraying Ed like literally two hours after I saw that episode. And I was like, oh my god, I can't wait for season two. I can't wait for this kid to shine. And then, of course, they canceled the show. So, sure. like, I get it. It was really obnoxious. But that's who that character is. But they should have put that character in the show way earlier. They should have had the entire crew of Bebop. But then that also goes back to what if this was the origin story of... And no, that doesn't make sense because that's not how it joined the crew. I... Yeah, it's rough. It's rough. I understand. But at the same time, I disagree because I did kind of dig it. I didn't love it. But I dug it. I dug it enough because I knew who the character was and I was willing after, especially because this was the end of the series, I was willing to give the creators the benefit of the doubt. And I was certain that come season two, Ed was going to crush uh, whenever Ed was on TV, whenever it was on screen. And, and, so yeah, I, I, the, the the interview with the actress, man. That that's that's. I was like, hell yeah, let's go get him, let's go get him. And then yeah, it got canceled. So that, but I, yeah, I I didn't hate Ed. I did not hate it. The look was wonky. It was. It's hard to interpret that character for TV. But yeah. All right. So I gotta firmly disagree. I think 
Um, Ed was probably the worst part of the whole show. Um, and it is not a discredit to the actor at all because obviously like they were giving it their best. Um, <clears throat> there's been, to my understanding, some contention in the, the fandom of the original anime of, um, as gender. So they, they hired a non-binary, uh, actor to portray, Ed, which oh, I will respect their their pronouns. She uh, was a back. she was a girl. It was a girl. It was a told girl. I'm telling you, I, I saw the, the 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 actor. I guess goes by. Um, oh, actor. gotcha. Okay, yeah. okay. Yep. Gotcha. Um. So I'll I'll respect them in in that regard. I do personally. I I do see Ed in the anime as as female, but that is that is neither here nor there, nor necessarily important. Um, I just, they didn't do a good, bad job. The actor did not do a bad job. I'm sorry that I do not remember your name, um, but by God, the direction was fucking shit. The, the, the first thing that we see with, with Ed is just an intense close up of was, their face. Yeah. Just, Spike, Spike, it's it's Spike Spiegel. Oh. It was <laughs> like if you're gonna compare live action Bebop to a fan film, which I uh, like, I've seen a lot of people compare. Like, oh, Netflix Bebop looks like a fan film. This looks like a bad fan film. It was rough to watch. Hmm. The actor was giving it their all. I will give them that. They. I think they did a good job with what they were given. It's just the direction was bad. Like, why would you have the introduction of a character on, like, a weird fisheye kind of lens just fucking right at the camera? Because that's what Ed is. That's Radical Ed. But, but Ed is that, yes, to an extent. Um, I don't think that Ed is a character that is easily adapted to live action. Ed is super cartoony. Super cartoony. Immensely, immensely cartoony. She's rubber. In, I mean, she. Yeah, yeah. Ed moves the arms and it's all rubber. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, not something that's easily adapted to live action. I think that they should have just saved Ed for the next season or just kept Ed as the uh, name drop in the the um, the brain trust I want to say it is yeah uh, I think that the, was the episode the, um, could be getting that wrong the, the, but the brain, brain trust episode where they, they mention uh, or um, they Jet get, mentions yes yeah, radical uh, Ed radical Ed like, they should have just kept it that. So, like, we know that Ed exists in this world, but, like, to end that on... To end the series effectively on Spike's... Like, this this really awful Pee Wee Herman impression. Now that, you nailed that. That, you're absolutely 100% right. The Pee Wee Herman impression, I, that... Holy crap. That that's not like, Ed. That's, that's, that's perfect. Not Ed. And they're 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 trying to set it setting it up with the the butterfly man, which would be Vincent, Vincent from yep uh, from the, the movie. Bebop movie. Really good lead in with lore into the show or or into a second season. I think they they nailed that with the dialogue. Yep. And like I said, the my my complaints are not with the actor portraying Ed. I think they did a fantastic job with what they were given, but what they were given was fucking garbage. And again, I I see what you're saying, but I I, I agree one hundred percent. Don't if you're gonna don't do Ed there. Don't use Ed as the the hook for next season. That's bad. They should have if they were gonna do that, you do that in episode three, the very end of episode three. And I don't even remember what episode three was, but I'm just using that. Use it in episode three. Pop Ed right there. Do that. And when people are like, what the hell is that? And then watch the next episode. Let the character shine. Let the actor 
shine and portray so, Ed. And then maybe people will come on. Now, if, if you know, the directors don't get it right, then it didn't get it right. And then, then we can be like, yeah, no, Ed totally sucked in this entire show. But for a minute and 35 seconds, I, I get it. I get it, but I just think that that was the wrong thing to end on. Ed should have, like you said, yeah. either not yeah. been there this season, or the way I look at it, Ed should have been there really early on. Mm-hmm. If you're going to end the episode with Ed, end it in an early episode, and then have Ed throughout. Well, at the very least, like, mid-episode, like or like mid, mid-season or episode. Mid-season. Mid-season's good, um, yeah. But, yeah, it just felt wrong, especially after the downer of the finale was of, like, all of the cast losing everything. The whole the whole cast losing everything, and then it ends with, with that, which, like, I know you gotta end it on... Maybe you gotta end it on a light note, maybe you gotta end it on a hook for a second season, but please, for the love of God, do better than that. Which... Which, right before we wrap up, brings it full circle to the question I ask, right? What sunk the show? What sunk the show? You can't blame Ed, but like like you just said, um, oh my god. And here I am. No, but I don't I don't think that Ed helped because that like Ed's appearance on Cowboy Bebop has like millions of views on YouTube. And not in a good way. For the live like, action. In like a meme kind of way. And that's 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 what I mean when I come full circle with the question, what sunk it? And it seemed like what the creators were doing was giving Ed to us, the fans, instead of giving Ed to everybody. Sure. And then the fans kind of was like, what's that? The- it didn't, I did. it didn't appeal to any. It didn't appeal to anybody, right? And, I, and and yeah, it was a terrible way. A terrible way to end. It really was. And again, I like I, when I saw it. Like an hour later, I I watched the interview with, with the actor portraying it, and I'm like, hell yeah, let's go season two. And then what? Well, the, the, the person, the the actor portraying Ed, seems like a really enthusiastic actor. Like Very I much. truly wish them all the best. Uh, I'm. Should we say actor? Should we say actor? Or should we call that person a performer? Because again, pronouns. I don't know. I, are we making things up now? I, I don't want to mess actually, anything up. I, I personally think that, as far as I know, actor is okay. Actor okay. is kind of universal, neutral. But like, I, 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 it's getting into a whole big other thing of right. like, I've heard some feminists say that actress is an offensive term, but like so so we'll we'll cut in the middle ground and just say actor is fine. Gotcha. If you're good with that. I'm uh, please in the comments correct our vernaculars. <laughs> Vernacular, yeah. Because uh we would love to genuinely love to learn and we are not looking to hurt anybody by the things that we say. Yeah, listen Listen, it's not about go woke, go broke. We're broke as it is. It doesn't no matter. We're just trying to be right. That's all. Yeah. It's just by, it's, it's, exactly. it's, it's, a, it's a spiritual thing. Well, all right. Anyway, yeah. um, I, I, I believe the actor who portrayed Ed, um, probably our biggest failing is not knowing their name. Um, mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, and that, that, that one's on us. Um, but... They were giving it their all. They seem super enthusiastic because uh, I, I watched the same thing that you watched. They seem super enthusiastic about having the role. They seem su- super enthusiastic about the series as a whole and about the anime. Like there is, I, I have literally nothing bad to say about them. It is about the direction that they were given. Yeah, and the stupid silly decision of either the director or the showrunner to end 
effectively the series on that. What if? Be- no, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead, please. What if instead of blowing Ed up the way they blew Ed up, there was a disembodied voice that we all knew was Ed and that kind of had the, you know, people who never seen Bebop, well, what's that? Who's that? And the way it ends. Because there was already this whole, like, mystery set up with Julia and Spike and Vicious, that triangle, the whole idea, like, Faze going this way, Jet disowned everybody, and then all of a sudden there's this weird voice calling Spike's name that we got as fans. But other people... Would that have might have worked, in your opinion? Uh, yeah, sure. sure. Instead of seeing that, like, giant, like you said, fish eye lens close up, like, Spike's people! Because I, I agree, I it was the performance is too much. In the actual performance itself would have worked if it was shot differently, if it was directed differently, if they used different takes. Because yeah. When, yeah. I, when I think Ed, I don't think Pee Wee Herman... I love that. <laughs> um, I can't take care of credit for that. I heard it from somebody else, but um, it's no. I, I personally think I think they should have kept it on the downer with, like, yeah, no. I, I I think what you said, like keeping it like a calm message or something like that, uh, would have been the right call because that 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 would have this these season two hook, and I I think it ended perfectly on that downer note of everybody is in that lonely position now. Um, Spike has definitively lost his love. He's definitively lost his former best friend. He's lost Spike. He's or, lost or, or, uh, Excuse me, Jet. Yep. Uh, he's, he's lost um, Faye, who's off doing her own thing now. I think it's the um, same thing with, with Jet. He's, he's lost his family, he's lost his crew, he's lost his daughter. Faye is off doing what Faye does, which is running away from everything that is in Faye's character. Like, yeah. she's going to find what Faye wants to find. That is, that is, that is integral Faye, Valentine, of just fuck everybody else Sorry, not sorry. Right. I'm gonna do what I want, like what I need to do. Yep. Like it, it set up perfectly. Had had the Ed thing been executed a little bit differently, would that have changed season the status of season two or not? Absolutely not. Right. Uh, Ed is now what killed the show. Um, Ed ended a, it on a sour note, but Ed is not what killed the show. Um, but I do believe it perfectly set it up for season two of nailing that lonely living in the past cowboy, like living, living in the past and living in the present cowboy bebop vibe because all of the characters, they're all living in the past. Spike is, is living in his past with Julia and, and Vicious Jet is living in the past with being in the police force and with his uh, former partner and former girlfriend. And Faye is constantly trying to find like who she is. While the contrast of that, the comic relief to that is Ed, who is only living in the present. And this we're talking the anime here, right? Um, and that's that's been my interpretation of it. Is is all of these people are living in the past except for Ed, who is living solely in the present, but none of them are living in the future. Never, n- nobody's looking to what's next. Nobody's looking to how they can grow or how they are growing. And I feel like that's a big misstep of the live action show. I got nothing else to add. So on that note, 
<laughs> we gonna call this hit. Listen, can we, can we end it on a rating? Because I think we're gonna have some hot takes as opposed to the rest of YouTube. Yeah, we absolutely should end it on a rating. I I, I love when we rate things. I mean, we've rated things before, right? Remember that yeah. Alien Covenant freaking podcast we did a thousand years ago? <laughs> I sure I sure don't. But yeah, I, I, mean, it it I, do, I know we did it though. <laughs> it happened. It, it did it happen. Happened. I'm pretty sure there was a rating. Go listen to it like four years ago. Like go listen to our like shit podcast. That's like, like, listen, one of our first podcasts longer, was like Suicide yeah, Squad or something. That is longer than the movie itself. So good. Those were good times. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's do it. Uh, on uh, what? 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 What's what? All right, what's the rating curve first, and what are we rating? Like, wh- I would we... say scale of one to ten, just in general. Scale of one to ten, space cowboys. Yep. All right, you go first. Or I go first. What are you doing? You go first. Seven out of ten, Space Cowboys. I think that's fair. I really like the show. I think Vicious brought it down a notch. Uh, I, I the, the Julia thing, yeah, wasn't really my bag. Um, the the again the over uh, the over sexualization in certain things wasn't feeling. Um, and the. You can't do Ballad of Fallen Angels and not do Ballad of Fallen Angels. I'm sorry. I understand that we were amalgamating shows, but that's the what that's the one episode that got me into Cowboy Bebop. Because I've seen a couple before that one, and I was like, I don't understand this. This is nah. And then I saw that episode, and you you alluded to it earlier. You can watch any episode out of order and be like, oh shit. That was the episode I saw, like, maybe the third time I watched Cowboy Bebop, and I was like, oh, shit, what is this? And it hooked me, and then I watched everything, and I fell in love. So, 7 out of 10, and and, and my pros is the music, the style, the actors, Jet, and, 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 and... Again, the idea that I honestly feel like they were so passionate about this. They wanted this to succeed. Nobody goes into making a fucking show and, and wanted to fail. This felt like a love letter. I felt that. That's me. 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10, Space Cowboys. Your turn. All right. No, no I, I can't compete with that. I got to go with the 7 out of 10 as well. Cool. Um, I... Hated the portrayal of Vicious. Hated the portrayal of Ed. Um, and I hated the the lack of the lonely feeling in the show. Uh, there's a lot of things that I don't like about it. There's there's a lot of things that didn't feel like Cowboy Bebop, but there's a lot of things that did. Um, for the most part, the acting felt like those characters. Yes. The uh, the cast felt like those characters or iterations or adaptations of those characters. Uh, it felt overall respectful to the source material, even if it was quote-unquote technically, on a technical standpoint, poorly made. That's fine to me as long as it feels like what it's going for. Um like you said, it feels like a love letter to the series with various addendums and changes for our modern 2021, now 2022 times. Um, it felt like, as you said, the whole, the whole podcast, uh, a, a Earth 2 Cowboy Bebop. This doesn't feel like the Cowboy Bebop, but it feels like a Cowboy Bebop. And that'll do it, ladies and gentlemen. That is our long-awaited review of Cowboy Bebop, our first podcast since 2021 here in 2022. It's been a long time. Yo, Matt, 
brother, my brother, I want to thank you again for joining me on this and get and getting me motivated to do it. Thank you. No, no, I had a great time. Um, I think this would, if this is going to kickstart anything, this is like this was the one to do it. Agreed, agreed. And uh, you know, it's twenty twenty two. People, there are a couple of things that are out right now. I mean, like Book of Boba Fett's out. It's going on right now. Peacemaker, that's the best show on TV right now. There are a ton of things. We got a ton of Marvel things. There's a ton of Star Wars things. There's just a ton of DC things. We're coming. We're coming back. We're coming back. I, we have to come back, right? Oh, for sure. For sure. All right. So that'll do it, ladies and gentlemen, for this episode, our Cowboy Bebop review. Hey, Maddie, you want to take us out? See you, Space Cowboy. <laughs> <laughs>